Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. Give me one second while we get the rest of this set up. We'll get her going here. Just got to get a few folks signed in. We're going to get this thing together. I'm going to ask you to turn in your copy of God's Word to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31, while we're signing folks in. Good morning, good morning. I pray everybody's having a great day today. Hmm? I'm like hitting you on Facebook. Hang on one second, Zoom. Let me see what's going on with our Facebook page. Let's go to yours and it's not there. It's recording. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, forgive me for that. I had to uh, get things kind of squared away there. Uh, we're in Proverbs chapter 31. Happy Mother's Day, by the way. Praise the Lord. It's good. Mark, are you on now? Are you able to see us on Facebook? Not yet. I'm, I'm trying. Okay. My wife's not working. Uh, it's not working very well right now, so... Uh, we apologize for that. I hope you're able to get on. It looks like some folks are signing in, so that's very exciting. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we want uh, to, like I said, wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. Uh, I know it's uh, it's a beautiful day outside. I know we're supposed to get some rain this afternoon. Uh, we're going to just rejoice in the Lord here this morning. We're going to be in Proverbs chapter 31. Uh, we're going to be looking at verses 10 through, uh, through 31 there uh, in the book of Proverbs. Um, in kind of uh, a, an explanation of what the model mom should be. Now, I know some folks will look at this and they'll go, man, this is, this is crazy. You know, this, this, the standard is so high, and, and how in the world would we ever even aspire to such, uh, such a, uh, an amazing uh, individual? But I want to encourage you today that this is a model. This is... A, uh, what God has given us as uh, the kind of woman uh, and mother that he um, uh, deems appropriate uh, for us to, uh, to exemplify. Uh, uh, there's a lot of verses throughout here that reference the men and the women, but this is reserved specifically for a woman of noble character. Now that word noble there is really an interesting word, the Hebrew word. Uh, it refers to most oftentimes as an army, as someone's strength and, and victorious and a few other words, uh, virtue, able, activity, strong. Um, it talks about this is the characteristics of a, uh, of, a, of a woman that God has set up and said, this is what we desire or encourage for you uh, to, uh, uh, to, to be a part of uh, in this uh, thing. Sorry, I wish you got folks signing in there, so forgive me while I'm trying to take care of this stuff. Um, so anyway, there we go. Um, so we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 31, beginning in verse 10. But before we go any further, I'd like to encourage you to bow with me and let's have a word of prayer together and ask God's blessing on this morning. Uh, Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, the day in which we can celebrate our mothers, a day in which we remember the women that you chose, Lord, to bring us into this world. And uh, we are indeed grateful. Uh, Father, I, I know that for today uh, it's, uh, it's a sad time for some folks because they miss their mothers or maybe they never had a relationship with their moms. But God, I think today should be a day in which we celebrate you because you chose those women uh, as a means to bring us into this world and allow us to bring glory and honor to you. And so we are grateful, we are thankful for our mothers and I pray, Father, that, uh, that all of the praise and all of the uh, honor that we, get, that we give to them would be focused on you, Father, because you are indeed uh, the one that deserves all of our praise. So guide us this morning as we look through this, and we'll give you all of the, uh, all of the attention and all of the accolades that you uh, so rightly deserve. Father, we love you, thank you, and praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. 
So Proverbs chapter 31, we're going to be looking at first beginning in verse 10. Now, it's kind of an interesting uh, book here, or, uh, part of, the, of Proverbs 31. Um, one author says this, he says, this is a commencement of an alphabetical poem. So like each verse begins with the letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And, uh, and uh, it's a way to present an admirable picture of a good wife, a uh, good woman. That comes from the New Treasure Scripture Knowledge. That's where I got that from. Uh, but anyway, it starts out here in verse 10. It says, a wife of noble character, who can find? I mean, that's the question. Where can we find or where are the woman, women that have this strength, this uh this valor, this uh, that are able and active and all those things. Where can one find that? He says in the second half of verse 10, she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works eager uh, with eager hands. She is like a, the merchant ship's bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark and provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. We're going to explain all this, so don't worry about it. Uh, she considers a field and buys it. Out of the earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets out of her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. She sees uh, that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In the hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. I'll explain that. Don't worry. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, yep, snow in the Middle East. Could you figure that out? Uh, when it snows, she has no fear for her household, uh, uh, for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. Her she is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gates where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. Uh, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the day when it comes, uh, when it, uh, to the, the, the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise and call her blessed. I hope you did that this morning, uh, young people. Uh, and her husband also, and he praises her. It's very important, men. Uh, it says, many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Verse 31, give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. I want to talk to you today about the model mom. Uh, the first thing I want to point out to you there in verse 10 is that the model mom is rich. Now, I don't mean that she has lots of money, but instead she has lots of value. There is value in a woman of noble character. Uh, I remember uh, when uh, when my wife and I had a conversation one time, and I made the statement uh, about when uh, when I, the, my dating life versus when we got married. I said, you know, there were there were women that you would date, and then there were women you were married. And she was the kind of individual that I that I uh, wanted to marry. She had the character and the uh, and the uh, uh, all of the uh, the things that I wanted to find in a wife. Now they should not be mutually exclusive people. But at the same time, uh, a woman of noble character, that is something that is a blessing. As a matter of fact, it says that she's far, worth far more than rubies, than fine jewels. In other words, she's extraordinary. Can you uh, so tilt the camera up a little bit? Which camera? Tim, I guess your Facebook. You said, can you tilt the camera up a little? Is that more better? I hope that's better. I can't tell. But anyway, um, it says, a wife of noble character, she is far, worth far more than rubies. In other words, she's extraordinary. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, great verse. He who finds a wife finds what is good, the Bible says. 
Uh, now, I, you say, well, I thought we were talking about mamas. Well, I'm still kind of old school. I believe that if you're going to be a mama, you need to be a wife first. And, and I know that other folks have, have got different views on that, but I encourage you uh, to keep it. He says, finding a wife is a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. A wife is extraordinary. That is the woman of noble character. Not only is she extraordinary, but she's also essential. Uh, again, I'm going to probably step on some toes here, but I also am just old-fashioned enough to believe that a mother and a father are designed by God to invest uh, equally in that child uh, that God blesses them with. The mother brings certain things to the table. The father brings certain things to, to the table. And that makes that child well-rounded and able to attend to the things of this earth. Um, I, I, unfortunately, you know, there are, there are people out there that believe that same-sex marriage is uh, still just as beneficial, but I don't care how you are. A man can never be a mom. Uh, you're not wired that way. And a woman can never be a dad. She's not wired that way. That's why God intended for one man and one woman to be wed and to have a child. She is essential. If you read the book of Proverbs, you'll see numerous times that Solomon says, Son, listen to me and listen to your mother because we're both bringing something to your life to encourage you. Proverbs uh, chapter 20 verse 15 says, There is gold and rubies in abundance, but the lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. A mother and a father bring things to that child's life that will help them. And I don't care how hard you try, I would be a terrible mother because I'm not wired that way. I don't have the God-given uh, characteristics that God has given my wife and has given women. So, uh, and I praise the Lord for single parents that try to fill both of those roles. Amen, hallelujah, for your willingness. But God has intended for a mother and a father to invest in that child's life, and she is valuable. She is essential. Uh, that's what makes her, that model mom, rich because she is extraordinary and she is essential. But the second thing I want to point out to you is that the model mom is responsible. Look what it says in verse 11. It says, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings good, not harm, all the days of her life. Now let's break that down for a second. This wife, who is valuable, who is extraordinary and essential, who is of more about value than rubies than any kind of financial wealth, helps her husband. I mean, let's face it, man, we can use all the help we can get, right? Uh, when God created Adam and Eve, Eve was created as a helpmate, one who came alongside of Adam to assist him and to make his life easier. Now, man, that does not excuse you because the Bible says we are to encourage our wives. We are to prioritize our wives, God first, and then our wives above everything else. That means kids and work and all of that. But it says this husband, when he finds that good wife, that wife of noble character, uh, he uh, has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Verse 12 says, she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. In other words, she is dependable. She is dependable in that household. That husband can count on his wife. He can rely on his wife. He can trust his wife. One of the things that I find in many relationships is spouses want to hide things from the other one. My friends, that is a, 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 a destruction of a relationship that is waiting to happen. You don't want to hide things. You want to be honest and open. A husband wants to be able to count on his wife, and a wife needs to be able to count on his husband. She is dependable. Proverbs 12, verse 4. And I'm going to put a lot of Proverbs out there today. That's why I think that book is so vitally important for you and I to read and to study. And that's why we teach it on Sunday night, on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4. A wife of noble character. Again, there's that strength, that power. 
A wife of noble character is her husband's crown. She is regarded as, as the, the pinnacle of his life. She is, shows his, uh, it helps in his success. It says, but a disgraceful wife is like decay to his bones. It's a painful and difficult thing. Now, ladies, I would encourage you, and I know I'm going to use the word encourage a lot today, to understand that you have a vital role in the success of the household. Uh, I've always said, you've heard me say in the church, that when things go well, God did it. When things go bad, I did it. I don't ever want to put it off on my wife or make her uh, feel like she's to blame. I think it's important to understand that we work together. But the Bible says that woman is a crown to that man. It is a it's something that is recognized and something that is appreciated by those around it. She doesn't bring harm to him. And she doesn't do anything. She is dependable. Uh, Proverbs 21 verse 9 talks about uh, it's better to live on the corner of a roof of, than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. It's better to live on a roof somewhere than it is to live in a house with a woman who wants to do you harm. So this is an important thing. A wife needs to be dependable. But not only is she dependable, but she's also diligent. She is willing to comfort her household above her own needs. She is strong, a good provider, and financially responsible. Where do we get that from? Well, look at verse 13. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. So in other words, she finds the products and things that her family needs and then goes about the task to make sure those needs are met in the household. It goes on to say, uh, she, uh, she's like a, the merchant ships bringing her foods from afar. She goes out and finds those things and brings them back and serves them to her family. Healthy things, good things, quality things, because she knows that what she does for her family is going to ensure their health and well-being. Uh, it says she's like a merchant. She goes out and finds it brings it back. Look what it says in verse 15. She gets up while it's still dark. Boy, I know I stepped on a whole lot of toes just then when I said, because uh, I know that some folks don't get up when it's still dark. Uh, but it says that woman, that diligent woman, that woman that is about her task, it says she gets up while it's still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. Now, we're not talking about the advocating of slavery here. What we're saying is, is that everybody that was in that, within that household was uh, attended to, was provided for. That model wife, that woman of noble character, is not just going to take care of her husband or kids, but anybody else that she is responsible for. She takes care of those people in her household. I like what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. Now, he's writing to the church in Thessalonica, but in the context there, he says, now, brothers, and he explains them what he wants them to do. But I really believe that this letter that he wrote was to help everybody in the church. Look what he says. He says in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 11, he says, make it your ambition, your desire, your focus, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life to mind your own business and to work with your hands just as we told you. Verse 12 says, so that your daily life may win the respect of the outsiders and so you will not be dependent on anybody. Paul was saying, you've got to be responsible. Now, if he was just talking to the men, I think that's a, mis a misinterpretation. He's talking to the church. He said, learn to live a quiet life. Mind your own business. Don't be a busybody. Don't be a gossip. And do things with your hands. And the purpose of that is so you won't have to divide, depend on something exter external. You're providing for your household. So men and women, that's an important thing. Diligence was a big deal. Look what else it says. Verse 17 in Proverbs chapter 4, or verse 16. It says, uh, she considers a field and buys it. And her earnings, she plants a vineyard. So she's financially responsible. Uh, she takes care of uh, finances and uh, makes sure that she's utilizing the resources that God has blessed that household with in a, in a positive fashion. 
You say, well, man, I wouldn't want my wife going out and making deals. Well, uh, she's probably uh, better at it than you are. You just don't realize it. Uh, she probably sees things that you don't see. Just like I said, when she invests in our kids, and she brings some to the table that we don't have, uh, ask her about these things. What does she think? What is her ideas? How, do, how should you go about attending uh, to the finances of the household? Because it says the model woman is one that not only considers and buys the field, but she also plants, a, 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 but out of the earnings, those things that she gets from a result of that field, she invests that and makes it uh, grow more, literally, in this case, um, a, a vineyard. Verse 17, she sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. Listen, it's important to be healthy. Uh, God says that good health is a good thing. And so uh, uh, I encourage the, the women to, uh, to not, uh, not exercise just to, uh, to be able to get into that bathing suit, but instead to have the strength and the agility to be able to attend to what it means to be a model mom, to go about your task and have the strength that you need. Verse 18, she sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In other words, she puts in a full day's effort to make sure that all of the needs in that household are taken care of. Now, what some of you are asking right now is, what about, what about if I work outside the house? If that's something your household has decided, then I understand that, and, and, a, and a husband and wife need to agree together on how those household things are going to be split up and shared and all of that. Uh, we do that now in our household with my wife's situation being what it is. Uh, we kind of share those uh, responsibilities and try to take care of things together. You've got to work that out for yourself. But what I'm saying is, you, as a model mom, there are certain characteristics that God has mapped out, has set as a model for what it means to be a godly wife and woman. It says her lamp doesn't go out at night. In other words, she stays up late and continues to work and accomplish the tasks of that day. I remember when we were first married and my wife was a stay-at-home mom with our kids. And uh, I would come home after working and, and, uh, and she would want to talk. And I had been talking all day and I had to learn to, to have that communication with her. But one of the things I, I expressed to her was it's important that during the day to get certain things done so we both can sit down and have that evening together. And so there were goals that were set and all of that. Now, when she got in working and, and, and was working outside the home, those things changed. But the important thing was to set aside a task and accomplish that task during the day so that in the evening the family can be together and be able to interact with one another. So it says, um, she sees that her trading, verse 18, sees her trading is profitable and lamp does not go out at night. And then verse 19, in her hand she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. Now, I had to look that up a little bit. A distaff is a straight rod and the spindle is a little round part at the end. Now, you've probably seen uh, spinning wheels that we, that we you know, in the old days when they would make yarn. They would put all the wool on there and they would spin this thing and it would make the yarn. I don't know anything about it. I'm not even going to convince you. But what he was trying to say there is that, is that this woman is diligent and, and, uh, and is efficient and economical in providing for the resources of her household. She would uh, make the, take the wool and make it into yarn and then be able to make the garments or whatever it is uh, that happened to uh, be necessary there in the household. It took skill, it took effort, and it took diligence. That model mom is responsive to the needs of her household. But then it goes on to say in verse 20, that she opens her arm to the poor, so she's not only responsive to the needs of her household, but also to the needs of those who are in need. The poor, it says. Jesus was telling a story. Sorry, I've got an itchy nose. I hate to scratch my nose in front of everybody, uh, but I haven't been outside and I haven't touched anybody else, so I can touch my own nose, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but in verse 20, in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus is telling a story about a king who, who uh, uh, was in need and people attended to that need. And, and he, he tells them, well, as a matter of fact, he said uh, in verse 20, chapter 25 of Matthew, verse 36, he says, I needed clothes and you clothed me, clothed me. He said, I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Verse 37, 
And the righteous would answer and say, when did we see you uh, naked? Or when did we see you hungry? And when did you see you in prison? And the king comes back and he explains to them in verse 40, the king says, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. The king was saying, when you bless somebody else, you're blessing me. Jesus was saying, when you give to the needy, when you give to the poor, he says you're given to the Lord. He really is. Of course, then he goes on to explain what it is for those people that did not attend to the needy, to the needy and to the widows and so on and so forth and how they were judged harshly. But anyway, the model mom is responsive to the poor, but also to the precious. That is her family. Look what it says beginning in, uh, in, in verse 21. Well, in verse 20, like I said, she opens her arms, she opens her palms, her hands are open, basically, uh, to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Verse 21, when it snows, she has no fear for her household. You know, you know it gets cold, and what she's saying is, all the things that she, that my family needs has been provided. If they need clothing, if they need something, it is already in place. We don't have to scramble. I can remember many mornings when our girls were getting ready to go to school and we were looking for coats and gloves and shoes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what it's saying here is that her family is prepared ahead of time for the difficulties of life. When it snows, she has no fear of her household for all of them are clothed in scarlet. That is, they, they've got nice things, things that are prepared for them, things that are, that are beneficial to them. And he goes on to say, he says, uh, she makes covering for her bed, and she is clothed in fine linen and purple. Uh, what it says again is she takes care of those things at the house, and she also makes herself look attractive. Now, hear me on this. Uh, I'm not saying... Uh, that, uh, that, uh, that we would need to, to get up every day and have all their fine clothes and walk around like the people do on TV and all that kind of stuff. But it is saying that there is a certain amount of uh, responsibility and opportunity to, uh, to prepare yourself for the day. Uh, one of the things I've noticed while we've been on our lockdown here with COVID-19 is it's easy to get lazy. Uh, you know, I, I was joking the other day. I said, it must be Thursday because uh, I shaved before Proverbs. Um, uh, you know, that's the thing uh, that uh, we, we kind of prepare ourselves for certain things. But it's important to be set up for the day every day. It makes you feel good. It makes your day more productive. But I want to also remind you what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning in verse 3. He tells women, he says, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and wearing gold, uh, gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be come, it come from your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. So even though we say, go ahead and get yourself up for the day, uh, we're also saying, so I'm trying to keep an eye on what time, how we're doing on time here. Uh, it is that we need to uh, get ready for the day. It just makes you feel better. It makes you feel more uh, ready for what's going to take place. Uh, so I just share that with you as an idea. But don't let your beauty be based on the fancy clothes, even though it says here that she was clothed in fine linen and purple. That's just a result of her hard work and the things that she was able to uh uh, to benefit from because she was responsive and because God blessed her for her willingness to give to the poor and to her precious family. But the next thing we find here in our text is that the model mom is respectable. Look what it says in verse 23. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. Well, wait a minute, that's talking about the husband. Ladies, do you realize that your actions and your activities reflect directly on your spouse. The things you do and the things that you say and the way that you act reflects on your spouse. Now, man, I'm not letting you off the hook by any means. The same thing goes for you. But we're looking here at this, this woman. The husband 
has or is impacted by the character of his wife. Now, right about now, you're thinking about, yeah, I remember so-and-so and how they always said the wrong thing and embarrassed their spouse and so on and so forth. I'm just simply sharing with you that in this case, the model mom is respectable. In other words, her husband is promoted because of her actions. It says her husband, look what it says, her husband is respected at the city gates. He's, he is seen as one who has, and again, you remember, we've talked about this before too, that a man is responsible for his household, of taking care of his family. And the Bible says if he doesn't work, he doesn't eat. Uh, all of those things it says. So understand, a woman has an impact on that. Proverbs 14, verse 1, a great verse. It says, a wise woman builds her house, listen, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears it down. The reason a lot of households are dysfunctional, and I'm not, I'm not taking it off of any of the men out there. Believe me, I've got my, I'm not about to pick the speck out of your eyes. I've got planks hanging out of my own eyes. But I do see and have seen where a house was destroyed simply because a woman didn't want to uh, come alongside of her husband. She wanted to be her own entity, and the two of them weren't working together. It says, a wise woman builds her house. But, uh, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears it down. A husband is promoted because of her actions. The heart, and the other thing I want to point out to you is that her heart is at peace because of her attitude. Look what it says. It says she makes, uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, her husband is respected in the city gates where he takes his seat among the elders in the land. Okay, so that we talked about. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity, she can laugh at the days to come. So what's it saying there? It's saying that she has no fear. Uh, she's not concerned about, uh, about anything that might be going on uh, in this world. She gets herself up and she's just about the day and she can, whatever comes, she's going to be able to handle it. She speaks with wisdom, verse 26, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Listen, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness, verse 27 says. So she, her heart is at peace because of her attitude. Isaiah uh, 26, verse 3 tells us it's the Lord that gives perfect peace to those whose mind is steadfast because that person trusts in the Lord. So understand that there's peace in that person's heart. There's no fear of the future. There's no concern about what's coming up. There's going to be a confidence there uh, because of her attitude. But the third thing I want to point out to you here also as being a mom, as a model mom is respectful, is her household is prosperous because of her attentiveness. Now, if you have your Bibles and you want to turn to Titus chapter 2, Titus, that's in the New Testament, kind of near the back. Titus chapter 2, we're going to look at verse 3 and following, talking about attentive, uh, being attentive to the house. But I want to point out to you verse 27 again in Proverbs chapter 4. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. What's it saying there? She attends to her family and she's not lazy. She attends to her family and she's not lazy lazy. She does not, she's not a lazy person. What does it mean to be attentive to the household though? In Titus chapter two, beginning in verse three, uh, he just, just talked about men. You got to teach the, young, the older men need to teach the younger men. And then he says, likewise, teach the older women. Now uh, we're, we're writing this here. Teach the older women to be reverent in the way that they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine. Pastor was supposed to teach the, the women how to live, and that's what we're doing right here by reading out of the Word of God, but teach what is good. Verse 4 says, Then they can train the younger women to love their husbands and children. Verse 5, To be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one may malign the Word of God. When it says here in Proverbs chapter 4, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness, she has learned that from another mom that taught her how to do that or learned it from the Word of God. The, the, here in Titus, we're reading, it says, Women, you should know this and then teach it to that next generation so they will know it as well. Now, some of you came from households that didn't have a mother in there. 
But you know what? That's why God gave us his word. So you can still learn the characteristics and the expectation of our Lord and our Savior. God said, I want you to know this so you can invest and be attentive to your household. I don't care whether you work outside the home or not. If you're a part of a family, if you're married and have a husband, the two of you are to attend to the needs of that next generation so that they will carry on the godly standard that he expects for a godly home to promote. Fifth thing I'm going to point out to you when we talk about the model mom. The model mom is rewarded. Now, we just looked at the fact that she is rich, she is responsible, she is responsive, and she is respectable. But finally, number five, the model mom is rewarded. In other words, she receives praise from her crew. Look what it says in verse 28. It says, her children rise and call her blessed, her husband also, and praises, and he praises her. You know what it's saying there? It's saying that model mom, that mom that has done and been the woman that God intended her to be, her husbands and her kids can't help but acknowledge her for who she is. You don't just need to give some kind of gift on Mother's Day. That's something that you give throughout the year because you continue to acknowledge that mother, that mom, that model mom who has been there all along. Now, some of you here today, you know, you'll miss your mamas. Your mamas have gone on to be with the Lord. My wife always uh, hurts, her heart hurts on Mother's Day because she really misses her mom. Been 20 years and she still, uh, she still struggles with that. 21 years, I guess, 21 years now. Uh, but nonetheless, she still can give thanks to all the things her mom has taught her and all the things that her mother invested in her. Thomas Edison said this, and I think it's pretty important. He said, I did not have my mother long, but she cast over me an influence that has lasted all my life. The good effects of her early training I can never lose. It, if it is, had not been for her appreciation and her faith in me at a critical time in my experience, I should never likely have, been, have become an inventor. He said, I was always a careless boy, and with a mother of different mental caliber, I should have turned out badly. But her firmness, her sweetness, her goodness, her potent power to keep me on the right path, or her, uh, to keep me on the right path. My mother was, uh, was the making of me. The memory of her will always be a blessing to me. What a great testimony Thomas Edison had about his mama. Yes, she may not have been the smartest person of the, in the world, but she was firm. She was sweet. She was good. And she was powerful. And Thomas Edison became the man he was because of the woman she was. She needs to receive praise from her crew, whether or not your mother is still with you or not. But not only does she receive praise from her crew, but also she realizes the purpose of her calling. If you're a mother, you are called by God to be a mother. And you need to realize that purpose that you have is to invest your time, your talents, and your efforts into that child or those children every single day. This woman realizes her Calling. What do I mean by that? Verse 29. Many women can do noble things, but you surpass them all. She has gone above and beyond. She has taken the reins and, 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 and ridden that horse uh, as, as well as she could to get to the destination of preparing those kids to send them out and be productive individuals in this world. She has realized the purpose of her calling. Then look what it says in verse 30 of Proverbs chapter 4. Charm is deceptive. In other words, when we've been reading Proverbs chapter 3 and 4, we've learned about how there are some women that will just try to, to entice you into doing something wrong. He says charm is deceptive. Anyone can use charm to get what they want. And, and beauty is fleeting. Now, I'm not about to go down that route road, of course, but we were looking at some pictures last night, and, and uh, I, I, I looked at some photos of me, and I said, man, I used to be thin and had hair and and looked okay, and now it's like 10 miles of bad Michigan road. But 
but back in the day, you know, but beauty is fleeting. Things are going to not be the way they always were. But we learned in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3, that beauty should come from inside. He says, in verse and here it says, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. That woman that respects the Lord, that honors God, that loves Him and teaches, his family, teaches her family to love them, that is the kind of individual that God is desiring and seeking. The purpose of her calling. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 16, a kind-hearted woman gains respect. But ruthless men gain only wealth. Now, I know the context there is a little weird, but he's just saying that kindness is much better than having material wealth. Someone said this. I don't remember where I found it. I found it in my file, though. The pathway of her greatness lies through her recognition of spiritual values, which is the fear of the Lord. That's when he comes down here, verse 31. It says, give her praise she has earned. And let her work bring her praise at the city gate. In other words, both privately and publicly, that woman needs to be acknowledged for who she is. Now, I know some of you are saying, yeah, but you don't know my mom. I don't have to know your mom. God knows your mom. God chose your mom to bring you into this world. And whether you got along with her, whether you had a relationship with her, whether you even know who she is, that doesn't matter. God chose her to bring you into this world, and that in itself is a blessing. She needs to be praised. She needs to be acknowledged. She needs to be thanked. I found a little story here by a lady by the name of Mary Corzan, and she wrote this, and I'm going to conclude with this. It's entitled, When You Thought I Wasn't Looking. It's from a perspective of a child acknowledging the things that mom did through their life. He said, when you thought I wasn't looking, I saw you hang my first painting on the refrigerator and I wanted to paint another one. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw you feed a stray cat and I thought it was good to be kind to animals. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw you make my favorite cake just for me and I knew that the little things are special. When you thought I wasn't looking, I heard you say a prayer. And I believe there's a God I could talk to. I could always talk to. When you thought I wasn't looking, I felt you kissed me goodnight. And I felt loved. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw tears come from your eyes. And I learned that sometimes things hurt. But it's all right to cry. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw that you cared. And I wanted to be everything that I could be. And finally, when you thought I wasn't looking, I looked and wanted to say thanks for all the things I saw you, th saw you when you thought I wasn't looking. Friends, I know that Mother's Day is many things for many people, but may it be a day that we acknowledge the fact that we are people that have been given a special gift from God, and we need to utilize that gift for His glory and for His honor. I hope that you will take time today to give thanks for your mother, whether she's alive or not, that you'll reach out to her if you can speak to her uh, today and let her know that you appreciate all that she did. And friends, if you're having a hard time today, talk to your Father and your God and let Him know, God, today my heart is heavy, but I thank you for the peace that you've given me. We're going to have a word of prayer. Thank you for tuning in today. God bless you. And we're going to close with this prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the model mom. And I know, Father, that for some it's hard to read this. And they go, well, I, I can never match that standard. But at least it gives us something to aspire to, Lord. There's a lot of things in the Bible that, that in our own strength we can't accomplish. But, Father, you've given those to us as a, as a standard, as an expectation. And we should always strive and, and set goals for ourselves to be the kind of person you have determined us to be. Father, we know that there are mamas out there today that, uh, that don't get the respect, the respect and the praise that they deserve. And I pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that they would know uh, that they are, they are important to you and that they matter and that they are a blessing uh, to be used by you to bring that life into this world. Uh, Father, there are people out there in the sound of my voice that may be struggling today. Maybe they lost a child or, or maybe they had an abortion at a time when they didn't realize that, uh, what, that, what that involved. Father, I pray that you bring comfort to their heart and let them know that, uh, that uh, there is peace and there is love and there is grace and there is mercy 
found in your arms. And Lord, let them find that comfort here today. And Father, may we continue to move forward as a body of believers, as, as your children, uh, reading your word, making it a part of our everyday lives, and knowing it to the point that we can just attend to all of the things that we'll experience in the days, weeks, and months to come. Lord, I look forward to coming back together with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I pray that you would open that door literally for us real soon. In the meantime, may we continue to be faithful. May we continue to lift up the name of Jesus and encourage others to do the same. And I ask it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Hey, thank you so much for being here today. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you the next appointed time. I'll be giving out Tuesday tidbits. So just a little devotional quick thing there on devotion there on uh, Tuesday. I'll give that out on Facebook. Uh, also on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. And I'm working on trying to get so we can get back into church uh, this coming Sunday. But I can't get our landlord to call me back. So hopefully that uh, we'll get that pretty soon. But we're trying to make that arrangement. Uh, God bless you. Keep praying. Keep uh, looking in the Word and reading it and making it a part. And we'll look forward to the time we get together. Until then, we'll talk to you real soon. Be safe. Enjoy the day. God bless you all. Bye-bye now.